Welcome back. This is week number three in our macro month, I believe. And today we're going to take a look at tricks number eight and nine of my overall 11 macro tricks that I want to show you. And again, as a recap, uh, we saw two tricks last week, five more tricks and videos that I produced uh, a year ago, actually. And then also, these are not new tricks. These are just pretty much all of the basics that you need to know about macros to really get cracking and get going with them. So today, um, tricks number eight and nine, we're gonna take a look at how to record into a macro. That's actually super, super cool. And then also uh, custom hard keys. That's also something that might be really useful to you. So buckle up and cheers. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Good scotch. All right, first of all, let's talk about recording into macros. This is really cool because if you're a gaming nerd and you have one of these fancy keyboards with macro keys on the sides, um, maybe you were like, hey, macros are supposed to be recordable, right? They are, and it's awesome. So remember how last week I, I told you that um, if you have macros or rather commands that you find yourself typing over and over and over again, then maybe just look up the shortcut with the command help keyword. Well, in this case, if you find yourself doing um, a certain, you know, step off sequences or um, a certain a certain sequence of commands over and over again, then maybe it's time to record them into a macro. All right, let's uh, actually find out how that is done. So it's, um, Pretty easy, actually. Where's the record button again? Oh boy. Here's the dedicated help key. I hardly ever use it because I'll always use my phone, for example, or the, the computer. If we go Control Alt H, then we get the help keyword. Just press uh, please, and then we get into this thing right here. So now we can just look for the record command and then we should see or find out in a second whether or not there's actually a shortcut for that. All right, record keyword. Uh, so MA plus store equals record, perfect. The use case that I have in mind is I want to um, sort of create a sequence. And the way that I do this is um, I'm actually going to um, set all of these to zero all right, and then I'm going to go and next my way through the fixtures and just go at at store the whole thing, then go add zero into the next one. So uh, let, me, let me show you. Add add, perfect, and store. This executor is selected and now I'll go at zero. I'm just using my command shortcuts here. I have this menu up here toggled um, super fast. All right, at zero to the next one, add add, store, press enter, create second queue. And that's something I would be doing for, um, let me turn on highlight again, for all of these guys. So now I want to automate that. So let's remember, MA plus store, that's the record button. So I go MA and then store, and now I have the record button and all I have to do is press on an empty macro tile. In this case, 10, for example. All right, now we're recording. So now what I'm gonna do is go add zero, enter, then go to the next one, go add, add, then store, and then that's it. So now I'm going to go again, MA, or in that case, shift, actually, and then store. Now I have the record button again. I can go into this macro. And now this little, red ball is off again. So that's how you can tell that uh, you just recorded a macro and then um, it's off again. And also obviously what goes into that macro, pretty much every command that you perform while you record. So let's take a look. So here we have the add zero, perfect. Then the next, then the normal, that's again the keyword. If you do add add, that's the normal value. So this is pretty much at 100 most of the time. And then store. Perfect, that's all we wanted to have. Now, watch what happens when I execute this macro. It actually takes a little while because while I was recording it, I was actually explaining stuff, right? So this doesn't really help us 
because now whenever we click on this damn thing, uh, it actually takes close to four seconds to complete. That's not helping anyone. So you can see over here that, um, especially when you record a macro, then you can really tell that macros and sequences aren't that much different to each other. So just go in here. Ooh, that mouse just published a new video. So just go in here and then go follow. Um, but as you can see, actually, let me check this out. Oh, so I can also go one day. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So now, uh, as you can see, I rigged this macro to actually take two hours and 46 minutes to go to the next step. That's so usable. All right, let's go in here and then just go to follow. And now we can actually click our way through here. Boom. And now if we actually execute this nice little sequence over here, that's all we wanted to have. Make it look really fancy by going follow. And now take a look at this. Ooh, sweet. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you today, record into macros. Um, I think that's really useful. And especially if you remember that, if you have the shortcut menu on or you even have a command wing, you fancy bastard, then you can just go <laughs> shift and press the S key and then you have a record. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you tonight. And then the second thing, custom hard keys. That's also a pretty fun one. So let's go ahead and do something that's actually kind of cool. First of all, I gotta show you something else. I think that hasn't been taught yet. All right, so before I can explain to you hard keys, what I want to or have to explain to you is the way that this at button works, this at key. So let me just rename this. So this at key right here, uh, that's a really cool thing because the command uh, that you see in here, what it will do is actually go fixture one through and it will enter that to the command line and then it will wait for you to complete the uh, command sequence. So let's just enter that. And I can see that in the command line, you see this beginning of the command, but it was not submitted. All right. So now we can go fixture one through, I don't know, 100, for example. All right. If we go highlight, perfect. If you clear and then click on this again and then just go two, then you can see, not really, then you can see it's only two fixtures. So you just saw that we can actually uh, start a command and then just add the at sign right behind it. And that will uh, leave the command line um, unsubmitted. So like that, you can actually enter your own custom stuff behind it before you submit it to the console to be executed. And that's really cool. The other way around works as well. I just couldn't find a good example. If you think about it, if you have the, the chance to actually put something into the command line and then wait for you to finish it, or rather have you put something in the command line first and then click on a macro which finishes that, uh, that command and then um, submits it to the console, then obviously we should also be able to just use different macros to kind of string together different uh, pieces of commands on the fly, right? So that's exactly what custom hard keys are for. And maybe let me just show you an example. So by now you should know that I absolutely love these through ranges, right? So now we're going to go like that. And I'm actually going to explain in a second. So at 100 through, all right? And we're going to take this mode off. I know I kind of ranted about it. This is the only use case I can think of where this is uh, actually useful, which is crazy. But um, anyway, this might actually be a really good use case. All right, and then lastly, let me just go at 20 through. All right, at 20 through, CLI mode off. Cool. Now we have what I just tried to explain. Um, we actually have the chance if we go LED bars and then go at. Now we can string together a pretty complex command before submitting it to the console. So now we can go at 100 through, let's say 0, through 20, 0, 100, 0, 100, 0. And then 
Oh, let's just end with 100. Let's try and see what that looks like. Submit it. So you can see that's pretty wild. <laughs> and uh, your your viewers can probably not tell how many how many through ranges you put in that. But um, I think that's that's pretty interesting. And obviously it's a stupid example, but still, um, this is a pretty complex command sequence that we just assembled there. And you can do that with any sort of commands. You could even do that and go like, all right, you know, I always have my go to go. So whenever I want to create a new sequence, then just go bam, add preset type gobo, um, add, I don't know, preset five or whatever. So, um, with these sort of, um, you know, with these sort of things, where you just, uh, and here we have this limitation again. So let me just go edit macro 11. So the trick here is twofold. First, what you wanna do is wrap a command in both of these at keys right here. And then you want to turn off, turn it off, the CLI mode. All right, but that's not all, that's not all. If you actually go to this, uh, to a window, and by the way, you should be using those, all right? You should be using those. Uh, the only reason why I don't use them in these tutorials is because they're really hard to kind of get around because then you have a million uh, windows and all of a sudden you don't see Granime 3D anymore, but don't let that stop you. You should use these windows as it makes sense for you because you have a lot more space. And you also have these beautiful things right here. So we have the macros up here. So what we can actually do, and this is where the name custom hard keys really comes into play. So let's try this. I want to go assign macro 10. So that was the first one. No, that, that was the recorded one, I'm sorry. So, um, we should be able to go, let's see. So we should be able to go assign macro, that should be 11 through 13 at right over here. All right, didn't work. So that would be 12. So um, assign macro 12 at over here and then assign macro 13. Cool. So now uh, when we go back to our little sequence over here, um, LED bars at, then I want to go to my second window. You see what I mean? It's really hard to navigate on a video. So now we can go bam, bam, bam. Just go nuts and then end with a at 33 because why not? Go enter, perfect. So this is where the custom hard keys really come into play because you can actually assign them to your uh, keys up here, um, which are always in your view. So whatever you have over here, all of a sudden you have these really special buttons that you always have access to. That might be useful. And I mean, don't forget, you know, these X keys over here, just below the touch screen. If you're on a physical console, then these are sort of like your custom hard keys anyways, the way that most people use them. So what you could also do is just assign those down here, um, you know, assign macro 11 through 13. Nope, didn't want to do it. All right, that's perfectly fine. But point being, this is how you can create custom hard keys and you can actually assign them to different places. So like that, if you do have macros that you use over and over again, if you do have little programming tools and snippets that help you create amazing, amazing looks, then this tool might be godsend. And I really hope that it helps you out. And that's all we have time for for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or over in our Facebook group, which you are more than welcome to join. Link is in the video description below. And then also make sure to check out all the other videos from this mini series on macros. Next week, we're gonna see the last of uh, this macro month, the last video of this macro month, where I'm gonna show you how you can actually find out about command options and then also how you can actually change 
attributes of your show objects. And I did a video on that before. I just kind of want to touch on it a little more. So talk to you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, my name is Jonas.